This video is an intended for children under the age of 13. Hello everyone and welcome to another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I know, I know. Take a deep breath, calm down, and no, this is not a joke and it's not April 1st. I know I've been gone for a long time and we're not gonna make excuses. We're just gonna say, I needed the time. I started doing content or creating content for Star Citizen in August of 2013. Some almost been seven years. And before you even start to talk and tell me that I've wasted seven years of my life waiting for this game to come out, I haven't wasted any time. Those seven years have built amazing relationships with people I never dreamed I would ever get to meet. They've made me some of my closest friends and I am very grateful for everything I've done for Star Citizen and I am going to continue to create content starting today for Star Citizen on a weekly basis. My last video was done from my bedroom. Yes, I did all my videos from my bedroom. I think you all knew that because you used to watch my Ben's days when CIG was giving me more access to people to talk to at the home offices. My bedroom it, it was really starting to cramp my ability to have a sanctuary to get away from all the things that I do throughout the day. I'd get home, I'd do my videos, and I'd still be in the place where I was working. I'd be working at work and come home and go to sleep in a place I worked in. So I created myself a little studio in a front room that we had. I think most people turn these into a den or a front living area. I created a office out of it. This is the only personal stuff that you're going to get here. We're going to get right to Star Citizen as quickly as we can. But I was able to go to Ikea, get myself two Alex draw units and a nine foot countertop, a couple of kitchen equipment legs, and put together one desk. I liked it so much, I built another one. I have them across from each other on each wall in the room. I have a studio. I have three microphones in here, and at some point in the near future, I'm going to start doing some noise abatement in here, or some noise proofing, so I can actually do much better in here. But right now, I think I have a much better place to do my videos than I did when I was upstairs in my bedroom. And it should allow me to do more interesting things as time goes on. I mean, there are four computers in here, soon to be five. While I was away from Star Citizen, I also rekindled a love of my retro gaming. I did this by going onto eBay and purchasing two Amiga 1200s. One of them I will give away on this channel in the not too distant future. Probably about June. I want to just make sure that I get some pieces for my second one before I give away that first one. And when I do give it away, this computer is worth quite a bit more than just a Wow, I'm just going to put my name in the hat for it. See, the Amiga was the first computer that I owned that I actually got really deep into video games. And one of those games was Chris Roberts' Wing Commander 1. And I have it up and running on mine right now, and I'm going to stream that at some time in the, well, probably about two months from now. i got to get some things set up in this room to make that possible, but I think that's going to be pretty fun. So my channel is going to take a little bit of a turn, and what I mean by that is that we're going to go back to doing weekly videos for Star Citizen, at least two of them, one of them being a state of the game, and other ones either being gameplay or me comparing or critiquing or reviewing certain elements of the game really can't wait to do that either because that Cutlass Red just came out and I was looking at one of my older videos where I was actually reviewing the original Cutlass Red and I really want to go and bring that footage and put it alongside of the footage of the new Cutlass Red which you'll see in this video potentially and really bring that to you and talk about how things change over time and why it's actually good sometimes that things have to be reworked. I'm going to talk about something right now for about five, maybe ten minutes, 
And it's going to be about the development process. I did just say I've been doing these videos for seven years. And you figure by this point, most people would give up. In fact, there are many people that started with me at the same time as me doing videos for Star Citizen that are no longer creating content. Now, some of them, like Jared, have gotten jobs with CIG and some other people that I think, I, I don't know all the names, but I, I know that there were other people that were doing videos that now work for them. But seven years I've been doing this, and seven years I've been following the development cycle, and I think I'm finally starting to see things in a different light. Recently, there was a, there was a meeting. Let's just say that. There was a, a planning meeting in the LA offices where all the producers and department heads got together with Chris and Aaron and all the big wigs from CIG. And they discussed where the game was going for the next year. We already had a couple of things that were planned for this year. We had the rest of 3.8, we had 3.9, and 4.0. Well, we woke up last week, I think it was Friday, and looked at the, I mean, I opened it up, <laughs> the, and the roadmap was just gutted, and people got annoyed. And, you know, we knew that this planning meeting was happening. It's not the first time that's happened, but it got gutted. And then we got told that we'd see 4.1 and 4.2 shortly. Now, some of the things that were in on that roadmap, like the whole C, dynamic mission generation, those were very important to some people. In fact, to me, the whole C would be very important because running cargo is kind of one of the big things that you can do right now. And having something as big as the whole C especially for all those people that have bought one, would have been great. But instead, there was disappointment. In a lot of games, the developers have a set timeline. And by a certain point, whatever features aren't done and finished, or I should say done and polished, are going to get dropped from the release. Some games that were forced to do this actually had a lot of controversy over their releases. Now, I'm not going to talk about anything from Bethesda. I'm not going to talk about anything from Blizzard because there's really just too much uh, salt, too much fire, too much trolling going on about those companies right now. What I'm going to talk about is No Man's Sky because that actually came out to a lot of critical, not a claim, the absolute the absolute opposite, a critical firestorm, not just from the critics, but from the people that had purchased the game, like myself. Today, if you talk to people that are playing the game, they absolutely love it. And I can tell you, I absolutely love playing No Man's Sky. But for that first year afterwards, I really did feel like I was duped. Because at some point, all the wonderful features that Sean wanted to get into that game had to get ripped out of it so they can meet a day that it was going to be released on. So I'm going to call that, in my own words, a linear development cycle. That at a certain date, everything is done, polished, and ready to go. And then you work on those features and get them out and release the game. I think it was Todd Howard that said, it's not how you release the game, it's how you support it afterwards. I don't believe that's true. And I, I think that's actually the worst way in the world to look at a game. Because that's somebody asking me to pay them to beta test something they should have had right the first time. I know you're about ready to say, isn't that what Star Citizen is doing? But they're really not. Star Citizen is... It, it is a crowdfunded game. It is people that wanted to invest in and see Chris's vision come to light. So the way that Star Citizen is being developed, to me, is more organic. Now, I was advised by a very good friend of mine not to use that word. 
He said a better word would be dynamic. But to me, dy dynamic is that you really do arrive at the plan at the end, but a lot of things change in the process, and in the end, you get sort of the same thing that you were looking at. The reason why I'm using the word organic is because, well, let's, let's put it this way. I play a game. This game is called Foundation. It's an alpha or early access game available on Steam. It's a city builder. It's a game genre I really like to play. In this game, you have to pretty much build what I'm gonna call a colony. You drop down a city center, you drop down a woodworking, a stoneworking, a gathering hut, a, a stonemason to turn the stone that you get into stone blocks, a sawmill to turn the wood into planks, and so on and so forth. You create this ever-growing city. But the difference is, in a game like SimCity, you can pretty much plan how you want things to go. In this game, things happen more organically. When you put down your different objects in the game, the people are going to take the pathways and build their homes where they want to in a much more organic way. And then as you're building your towns, as you're building your colony, things start to take a different look in each place that you have. And the whole sum of the the sum of the whole part is that it really doesn't have a plan that ends with the plan that you start. Now let's go back to Star Citizen's development. In the beginning, there were five or six ships. Those ships were made. Item System 2.0 came out. Those ships were rebuilt. They were remade. To me, that's where things started to change. In the beginning, we weren't going to have procedural planets. When you were landing on planets, it was going to be kind of an automatic, automated landing system. You weren't going to be able to fly in between buildings or get near them. You would just contact the ATC, and then they would take control of your ship, and they would land you. Today, they're working on over and over again, they're working on the hover mode. They're working on the ability for us to fly through these buildings. We have procedural planets 4.0. We have an amazing game that we weren't supposed to have that now has these features built in. And what happened to other features they were working on that was that, that we're going to require that original system. Well, let's talk about the landing zones. They went from being very simplistic to being very complex. They needed places to store ships. They needed multiple ways in and out of the center of the cities or the landing ports. And they needed a much more, I, I want to say, a much more interactive ATC, which we still don't have which we will get. So the game, we knew what we wanted in the end, but because Procedural Planets came out when it did, and because Item System 2.0 was implemented, and because, 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 we have a much different game and much different systems than we thought we were going to have in the beginning for the release of Star Citizen. Some of this stuff was planned to be put into development after the game came out. But because certain features, because certain tech became available along the development cycle, Star Citizen changed and they called an audible and they moved in a different direction, pulling some things off the roadmap, adding others, pushing some things up, moving some things back, removing things, replacing things. You got it. To me, that's organic. Dynamic yeah, things change a lot, but we get to the same space in the end. Organic, it became something else along the way. That's the way I see it. I'm not unhappy about the development cycle of Star Citizen. I'm disappointed 
but not unhappy. I wish I had a completed game right now, and I know it's going to take a lot longer for this game to come out. And this year, I'm predicting there's going to be some headway made on this game. We're going to get pyro, we're going to get some cool things that we can do in it, but it's not going to be as big as we all want it. Because this year, Star Citizen is going to be put on, not the back burner, but be put on, let's just say, a little less of the total focus so CIG can get Squadron 42 out. All right, well, I talked enough. This is my first video back, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what my plans are. So initial plan, every single Thursday you're going to have a state of the game. And then at some point, Monday and maybe Wednesday, let's say Wednesday, you'll get other types of Star Citizen content from me. Spattered inside of that, you're going to get some content from me that might be No Man's Sky, Subnautica, Below Zero, Conan Exiles, it could be anything. I'll make sure that there's separate playlists for each so you can subscribe to my channel and choose the playlist that you want to watch. But I do want to send a thank you out to those of you that have been watching me, supporting me for so long, especially to my patrons. Without you, I don't think I would be here right now. I really do. I, I really am humbled by the number of people that still continue to support me even though my videos have not been out for quite some time. Folks, thank you so much. You know what to do with the likes. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button because it will really help it be noticed out there with uh, YouTube's new algorithms. If you do subscribe, clicking the notification icon is the only way to be sure that you are able to find my videos in the future because of those wonderful al algorithms. And as always, this show is not suitable for children under 13. <laughs> With that said, folks, you'll all be safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon.